Not long ago, I made two separate videos on the Kilos Camp Chair. First off was the small, lightweight camp chair you might take with you hiking, and the other one was a larger, high back version of this, which was probably too big for hiking, but great for car camping. Well, now I have two more items from Kilos that I want to share with you. They are tables. This is a small trail table and a little bit larger camp table. If you're interested in seeing these products, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, a couple things I want to mention. First, I'd like to thank Kilos for sending me these two tables so that I could share them with you. Next is, it's cold out here. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just is. It's late November, and uh, it's going to get a lot colder than this, but as you know, I guess I'm just not used to it yet. I'm all bundled up out here, and it's only about minus 5 degrees Celsius, which isn't very cold but the wind is probably around 30 or 40 kilometers. I'm second guessing the wisdom of coming out here today. And as a result, that makes it much colder. My fingers are almost numb working out here. I know, I'm whining, but we'll get through it, right? Okay, now you can probably actually, you can probably see that my tarp, I just put a little tarp up here to block the wind so I could even make this video. All right, so what we'll do is I'll take each of these tables out one at a time. I'll assemble them, show you how they're assembled. I'll talk about their key features. I'll give you their specifications and I'll also give you my experience in using them. All right, so the first table we're gonna look at is the one that I have the most experience with. It's a small, lightweight, backpackable table that, uh, well, let me just show it to you. So first off, it comes in this nylon sack. Uh, this will probably be the last time I carry it in this sack. I have been taking it out in this, and there's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just, I don't think it's necessary, to be honest. Adds a little bit of weight. More importantly, it probably adds a little bit of bulk. I guess the one, the good thing is the instructions on how to use the table around the outside of it. Yeah, I'll probably either take it without a sack at all, or I'll just make a little nylon sack. See, it is padded inside. Good quality, and if you're worried about the, the table getting damaged, which I am not, uh, then maybe you do want to carry that sack. So here's the table folded up, and uh, it's very simple, as you'll see in a moment. However, having said that, it took me a few, a few minutes to figure it out the first time that I went to use it, and you'll see why in a second. So it is all aluminum frame. It is shock corded at the two points where it would normally... Uh, uh, be connected together very much like their chairs are and the th way, thing to do is to pull it out first like this and you can see that came out pretty easily connect the two ends and that looks nothing like a table right okay so but I should mention also this is a table and a windscreen which is kind of cool and I'll explain in a minute now if you want to assemble it into the table format you pull the sides off of it I'll pull them both off first they are aluminum, of course, and as are the, uh, the assembly, the frame of this is aluminum as well. Now that you have those off, you put them back on top of the frame. They snap right on. Easy enough. And then this one snaps on. You know, first time you do it, it may be a little bit confusing. Second time, it's easy. It's easy. So that's all there is to it. Now, you likely have seen this if you have been watching, seen these in a number of videos recently because I have been taking this out and using it on a regular basis for cooking. I've been using it on the ground. Uh, I, I just like having my cooking uh, things all assembled in one spot. So I have a workspace, I guess is the best way to t uh, say it. Especially if your ground is wet or muddy or just you know uneven and you're looking for a space to work on, this is what this will provide you. Now, I'm gonna give you the specifications for it as is. Is, and then I'll convert it over to the windscreen uh, format so that you can see how that would be used. So, total mentions. Let's let's start with the weight because you know if it's going to weigh a lot, you're likely not going to carry it. But it is made from aluminum, and this entire assembly, and I think it is with the little package, the uh, container or the sack that it came with, comes in at exactly one pound or 440 grams. I will double check. If the table is lighter than that, because, it, you know, without carrying the sack along, I'll put it on the screen right now. All right, so the dimensions, and this is the assembled dimensions, of course, are 13.8 inches in this length, 9.8 inches in this length, and 5.5 5 .5 inches tall. 
which is 35 by 25 by 14. So it's not an especially big table, but I don't think I would want to carry anything any bigger than this. Actually, I don't think I'd need anything any bigger than this because I've cooked some, I don't want to say complicated, but some meals that had a lot of components to it and I was able to put everything on the table, do what I needed to do to assemble those meals together and it worked out very well. It's also just a little nicer. Well, you still have to get down close to the ground because it's not that tall off of the ground, but it's a little nicer than having to work directly off of the ground. Actually, it goes really well with the small hiking camp chair as a side table as well. So you can put your coffee on it and your lunch on it and, and work off of that as well. Yeah, so that's pretty simple. Now, let me just rearrange it into its sidewall configuration or windscreen configuration, which is easy enough. Take each of those off. And I guess you can put them on either way. I'll put it on in this direction. You'll see why. Sliding around here on my lap. Okay, so here is the instant windscreen. So what you have now is if I lay this down on the ground and I have, especially if I have a remote gas canister stove because that would be lower to the ground and I do like using those because they're usually more stable and your gas canister is away from your, your flame in your pot. But yeah, put this down, put the gas canister in the center and I've got a windscreen to protect the stove and, uh, and make it much more efficient. So very quick assembly changeover like that and you can change it back and to put it back together to, for storage, pull the legs apart, fold them inwards and that's it. It's now ready to go back into your backpack. So yeah, I think likely I will be carrying it in like this Maybe in a little stuff sack, but uh, I don't even think that's even necessary. All right, now we'll move on to the larger of the two tables. All right, so this is the larger of the two tables that Kilo sent to me. And as you can see, it's still in a relatively small package. You may actually find that this is something you could take with you backpacking. Uh, it's, I don't think I will, unless it's a very short distance, but I will certainly take this car camping. And in fact, I have. The one time that I have used this was on a car camping trip. But you know, if you're hot tenting or you have a conveyance of any type that uh, you can carry something along and you're looking for a little larger table, something that's it's a little higher off of the ground, then this isn't really all that big. And I'll be giving you the specifications in a few moments time. Nice little stuff, Zach. This is one I will keep in the bag just to keep all the components together because uh, not that there's a likelihood that they'll get lost, but there's always that possibility. So let me just take it out. This is more like the chairs in terms of the assembly, the components, the way they go together. Oh, this is going to be hard on my fingertips out here in the cold today. So really, there are two components, the top, and I'll put that up in a minute, and the legs. How's that for simple? Like the chairs, there is a Velcro holding everything together, but the frame, kind of like the chairs, pretty much self-assembles itself. There are two rods I'll explain in a moment to go with it, but you can come almost shake this thing and have it go together, the basic structural frame for it. Yeah, that's it. Just that simple. Now, there are legs on the bottom, little feet on the bottom to keep it from sinking into the earth. Not that there's a, a greater chance of that because you're not sitting on this like you would the table. And yeah, so there is the table uh, frame assembled. Now, to assemble or put the top on, you need to start with these two rods. Now, this confused me a little tiny bit when I first brought these rods into play and the first time I assembled it. Um, they are shock corded and go together right there. And there's these two little thing, I don't know what you call them, little places you would capture the knobs on the end of the, well, why don't I bring it up close and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so I'll see if I can do this right on camera. So here is the top of the frame itself. And you can see there's two little round ball-like things right here. And that is actually captured on these small plastic things. And plastic is stiff out here in the cold. Now, here's where it confused me. When I brought it across, make sure I'm capturing this on camera, and I kind of stretched it out to capture that ball, 
the frame kind of fell apart. And I couldn't understand why the frame was falling apart like this. It, it looked as if the poles were too short or something. But in fact, that's intentional. And you'll see why in a minute. So let me get the second one on. And then you'll see why they start to come apart when you assemble it. I promise not to whine too much about the cold, but this is hard on the fingers. All right, so once again, you can see that they didn't come completely apart, but you can see where the connecting point is exposed. And the reason for that is it's now going to come under tension and be pulled back together by the top of the table. So the table top itself is a mesh nylon with the center piece that is a solid piece of nylon. It has, well, it has little pockets I'll show you in a minute picked up all kinds of pine needles here and there are one two three four five six aluminum rods running through the material to give it structural stability the easiest thing to do is to lay it down over the top and at the end of each of these uh, upright supports are little plastic places that grab onto making sure you can see this see here and here the frame will grab onto those so you snap it into place you snap it into place. A little harder when the plastic's cold, though. All right, so now they're snapped into place. And you can see it comes up a little short from the other end. And this is where you apply tension. And at the same time, it pulls the frame back together. So pull it up. And it does take a little bit of tension to do this. Oh, make sure the frame is going to go together properly. I'll tell you, it's easier in warm weather. There we go. All right, that's better. Snap in. Snap in. Now, I'll show you underneath. This is that point right here that was opened and not quite fully assembled. And under the tension of the table, it pulled it back together. So now it is fully assembled and very tight and very stable. Let me just bring the camera down a little bit to give you a closer look at it. All right, so just a few features I want to show of you on each side. There's a small mesh bag for whatever. I don't know what I'd put in them, but they're there. There's one on either side. In the center of the table are beverage holders. Uh, they are a little mesh bag underneath with kind of a, I don't know, material almost like neoprene on, on the sides. And they're intended to kind of hold your your drink bottle, whatever it is inside. I'm just using my water bottle by way of an example, but any of your liquid beverages won't fit any good size uh, cup of coffee, but any other liquid beverages that you have, and this will keep them from falling off the edge of the table. And I think it's actually quite important to understand that as taut and as tight as this table is, it still has some give here in these spaces that mean that if you lay up something tall and narrow, well, I don't know if it'll do it or not, but yeah, see, it's not going to keep it, trying to keep the table as level as possible. But you can see how the water bottle wants to move around. And that's because this mesh, it is taut, but it's not like a hard piece of plastic or a hard piece of metal that will, um, you know, keep things from falling over. And, or as well, the rods themselves, as they run through the material, if you run your hand across it, of course, it's like moving over the rods like this. So, again as taut as this is, this is not something I would lay anything that's tall and narrow on, and that's of course why they have these two beverage holes. What you can lay on either side though are your plates. So if you're having a meal, or you want to lay a book down, or you want to lay something that's broader than it is tall down, then this will be plenty steady for that, but not for something tall and narrow. So it does have some limitations. I guess what I'm saying is I would not use this for meal preparation. However, when we were car camping, we did use this for eating our meals off of. So between our two camp chairs, we could lay this down and uh, we could put our plates. There's room enough for plates and everything and then pick our plates off of there. So you're not laying your plates down on the ground and having to reach down to get them. It just gives you a table that's a little bit taller off of the ground and something not so much a work surface, but something to keep them, I guess, from getting dirty. And uh, yeah, I laid my books on this in the evening. So when I was reading, you put your, I actually, that's what I did with this one. I put my flashlight in here so it didn't roll off and I lost it. But uh, yeah, so it has benefits that way. 
But once again, it's not a food prep table only because it's not stiff enough. All right, let's wrap this video up. So I, like I said, I've been using the smaller table uh, quite often in the last month or two, and uh, I really like it. It gives me that work surface, especially for cooking on. It's also something that I can use. I can even not use my wood stove so much, but all of my gas stoves, it gives another layer of stability to them rather than having them on the uh, forest floor where it's a little bit uneven and the possibility of tipping. The fact that I can turn it into a windscreen is also a great benefit in its use as well. Yeah, that small table will continue to come out with me here in the woods on my hikes and my day trips. Uh, the larger the table, probably not. It's probably going to be, be reserved for car camping unless I do do some tenting somewhere that I have a conveyance and can uh, carry things to, maybe by Polk this winter. We'll see. No, uh, not sure if that's going to happen or not. But the larger of the two tables is a small table by comparison to a lot of the things I've used over the years for car camping. Again, its surface is not level enough and steady enough that I would use it for food prep or putting anything tall and narrow on it like a glass, a tall glass of water or any other tall beverage. But it's still fine for putting plates on or books on or, or anything else that you want to keep off of the ground. It seems to work well for that and it's still pretty lightweight at 1.7 pounds. Yeah, so they're both well constructed. I don't foresee any issues with either of them. The smaller of the two is I'd almost bomb proof as long as you don't fall on it or something, I guess. And it's nice to have a little table. Now, I know people are going to say that it's just an added weight uh, that you and bulk that you don't need to be carrying. And yes, if you're an ultralight hiker, I agree with you. You probably don't need to do that, but I'm not an ultra-like hiker and I do appreciate convenience items like this as long as they're still uh, usable and still practical to take out with me. I mean, they can't be really big and heavy, and this isn't. This is small and lightweight, and so that's why I like it and will continue to use it. Okay, that's all I have for you today. I'll be sure to put all the specifications for the two tables in the video description, as well as the links to where you can take another closer look at them if you're interested. And if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.